Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Over the years, I'll occasionally have someone ask me, hey, why didn't Pontiac capitalize on Knight Rider's popularity with a special edition Knight Rider Trans Am? As we know today, looking back, Pontiac never did take advantage of the show's massive popularity, but there is evidence that there were, they were seriously considering doing just that, even going so far as to build a prototype or two of a Trans Am with a Knight Rider trim package for their hot new third generation TA. So today, we're going to rewind the clock 40 years and show you what was being considered at Pontiac in 1983. And if you like this content, please consider subscribing to help us on our march to 100,000 subscribers. You can make a difference. Let's go. Did you ever notice that Kit was rarely referred to in the series as a Pontiac or a Trans Am? Please do not refer to me as a car or a set of wheels. It's most demeaning. Sure, throughout the first season we heard it a couple of times. It's a new black Trans Am with a California license lettering night. What was that? Pontiac. That other car is going to give Trans Am a terrible reputation. Yeah, she was here last night until some guy in a black Trans Am bagged her and took her off. Between the first and second seasons, a memo came down from the powers that be that the writers were not to refer to Kit as a Trans Am or a Pontiac any longer. I'm guessing it was because there was no product placement deal in place with Pontiac by this time. Anyways, so the writers had to get creative. No longer was Kit referenced as a Trans Am, but rather a black T-top or just a T-top. It's funny they chose that specific feature on the Trans Am to identify the car. They could have just said a black sports car with a California night license plate, but instead they chose T-Top. See what I mean? I'm looking for a black T-Top that was in the area yesterday. Did you happen to see a car like that? Uh, some joker in a black T-Top. Let's dust him. And I guess you didn't see a black T-Top either. That's him the black T-Top! I think you saw him this afternoon. They were chasing you and you were in the black T-Top? T-top of yours looks a little light in the horses. You look at this T-top here. Colton, there's a black T-top coming in real fast. This could be trouble. Our first hint that Pontiac was considering a special Knight Rider Edition Trans Am comes from the June 1983 issue of High Performance Pontiac Magazine. There's a great three-page article giving an overview of the show for those who hadn't seen it, as well as some technical specifications pulled directly from the August 1982 Competition is No Competition mail-away poster. On the last page of this article, there's a sidebar titled, Knight Rider TA from Pontiac? Here's what it says. This car was spotted near the Pontiac factory in Michigan by Dimitri Toth Jr., who grabbed his camera and sent us these pics. As far as we can tell, Pontiac has a Knight Rider trim package Trans Am under consideration for spring 83 introduction. As a sidebar, it's interesting that it notes spring of 83 because this issue of High Performance Pontiac was June of 83. Anyways, the car would be black with red accents and basically would use many of the same components now offered in the 83 Daytona 500 pace car aero package. The Knight Rider markings on this car are tape, but they're hand cut. It's rumored that if the Knight Rider TA does make it to the marketplace, the package will include some additional goodies found on the TV show prototype. Okay, so at this point, it seems nothing more than possibly a fan-built homage to the show shortly after it began airing. But the fact that it was spotted in Michigan near the Pontiac factory is very interesting. At the time, it seemed this was the end of the story. But a few years ago, Knight Rider fan Adam Urbanski posted on a Knight Rider message board about his brush with this Knight Rider TA prototype. Special thanks to Adam for allowing us to tell his story and show these photos. Here's what Adam had to say. I worked as an engineering intern at a plastics automotive tier two supplier, and I was tasked with cleaning out the filing cabinets. 
I was able to save this gem, which was a photograph, professionally done, printed on a clear plastic sheet for a backlit display of some sort used to show prototype projects to insider trading shows and or conventions, or possibly as a presentation to auto execs to pitch ideas for programs that automotive companies would ask suppliers to quote potential business. I worked for the company from 1994 to 1996, and no one knew much about it, but the company I worked for probably bid out the ground effects package, including paint and decals, all prepped and ready for assembly and shipped to the assembly plant. Notice the blacked out turn signal covers, Knight Rider decal in place of kit scanner, and the 1983 and later style ground effects with striped decals. So on a side note, those aer that arrow package on this Trans Am was available in 1983 only with those special edition Daytona Trans Ams. And then in 1984, it was available um, across the Trans Am line. Uh, Adam continues, the display photo is large, about 14 by 30 inches. There are many moving parts and engineering programs always up in the air at any one time in a car company, all vying for approval. But this one didn't make it, obviously. GM and or Pontiac did at one time entertain the thought of an appearance package based on Knight Rider, even getting to a prototype stage. So fast forward to 2006, and one of these prototype Knight Rider TAs made its way onto eBay. Adam goes on to say, I'm from Grand Rapids, and this was a car for sale in Holland, Michigan, and I remember being in the area, my wife and I stopped at the location, and I took some photos of it. This was August 8th, 2006. Interestingly enough, August 8th, 1982 is the date that Michael Long quote unquote died according to his gravestone in A Good Night's Work. Anyways, the actual car has the front bumper blackouts removed but because you can make out the tape marks. The wheels are different and this one is a T-top car where the photo shoe car seems to not have them, but the decals and Knight Rider Scanner logo decal look to be the same. So, it appears that Pontiac was, in fact, considering a Knight Rider edition Trans Am for 1983 based on the spy photos from High Performance Pontiac Magazine and the fact that one of these cars actually appeared on eBay in 2006. The question is, where is this car today? Have any of you guys spotted it over the last 15 years? Maybe you remember this car on eBay in 2006 and saved a snapshot of the auction. Let us know. We would love to get to the bottom of this mystery. Also, let us know what you think of this trim package. If Pontiac had offered it, would you have bought one? All right, guys. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.